this episode of The View, we're joined by Darcy Stakem, a vice chairwoman at CBRE and one of the firm's top brokers involved in the sale of major real estate assets in the city. In fact, Darcy is known as the queen of skyscrapers in the city. Darcy, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. One of the big headlines, uh, I think, this year has been the influx of Chinese investors into the marketplace. What's driving this interest from the Far East? I think at this point it's been probably three years that they've been shopping the market and getting used to it and getting ready. The wave of building in China has reached such a crescendo that I think their long-term ability to continue to build at that rate is becoming more difficult. So they're looking to other markets where they can diversify their wealth and do construction. How big of a role do foreign buyers play in this investment market uh, in 2013? How do you see them playing a role in 2014, and, and how does that compare to their role in the past? I think it's never been sufficiently well tracked as to how much of a role foreign investors have played. So if you actually peel back the layers, you would find that there's been historically a great deal of offshore investment. Right, right now, it's I think it's its greatest peak ever, though. Um, I would say we're thinking the transactions may be somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of the capital dollars are offshore right now. Really? 60 or 70 percent of the, yeah. the capital that's coming into, that's buying New York City real estate is Right. If is you offshore. actually take back the, yeah. you know, the, the veneer of the local investor that's doing that deal, right. you will find the money behind it. Uh, in recent weeks, you sold a building to a Japanese investor here uh, on Ninth Avenue near Penn Station. Uh, any prominent group that you think is coming out of the Far East? I think the Chinese are definitely leading the wave of actually pulling the trigger. Their frequent flyer miles must <laughs> blow everybody else's away. They are, they are very quick to get on the plane and come back You know, two weeks later. They don't even think twice about it. Right, right. I think another of the big deals that everybody's talking about is Greenland Holdings. They're a huge uh, Chinese firm. I believe they're a state-owned entity. They're buying a major stake in Atlantic Yards. That's a deal that you handled and you arranged. Uh, how did that deal come about? How did Greenland win that that project? Well, Greenland is building 300 buildings a year, and I think something like 50 of them are over 50 stories, um, a bunch of them over 100. So this is a incredibly sophisticated developer, right. and we looked at who were major players globally and who were major builders globally that could look at the size and scale of this project and say this looks of interest to me. And they came in for their first visit. Um, I actually happened to take them out for the tour in Brooklyn and by the time they got done they said, we'd like to have dinner with Bruce Ratner. And I'm like, yeah, tonight? <laughs> I don't know about that. But actually, you know, Marianne Gilmartin, the president, came in and it just built from there. They were right. quick, they were decisive. I think they were disappointed it was only six and a half million feet uh, because of the size Hard to and think, scale right? yeah. of which they develop. But uh, they're coming here to the States and they want to do a lot more. Is there any memory that you think is being generated to the Japanese investors in the early 90s where they uh, came into the New York City marketplace with force, bought uh, several major assets, including Rockefeller Center, um, and then when the economy went bust, sold them at a loss uh, and wound up leaving the city in large part. Is that something that anyone think, thinks could be repeated here by these Chinese buyers? It's being asked a lot. If you really think about it, though, if the, Chinese, if the Japanese investors had stayed the long course that they said they were going to, don't you think they'd kill to still own Rockefeller Center? They would have done very well. Done extraordinarily well. If you're investing on a cycle basis, you got to time it just right. So right. that they, a local could get that as wrong as an international investor could get that. Right. If you're investing for the long term, this market always comes up with new highs, always.